Hello, I'm Jay Summit, and today in this short video I'll be talking about recursion. So here we have our idle window with Python, and I'm going to define a simple recursive function. So my function's called count, and it's going to take one parameter, which is called n. Now, to be a recursive function, you need to call yourself with some parameter, such as n minus 1. However, to be a good recursive function, you want to know when to call yourself and when to not call yourself so that you can terminate. So I'm going to use an if statement, and I'm going to say if n is bigger than 0, then I'm going to call myself. Actually, I'll print first. First, I'll print n. Then I'm going to call count, which is myself, and I'm going to give the new version of count n minus 1 as its parameter. Now, otherwise, if n is not bigger than 0, I'm just going to print done. So this function is defined, and it is recursive by definition, because inside of the function you have a call to itself. Now we have this if statement here that will make us stop calling count as soon as n gets to be non-positive, um, or as soon as it hits 0. So if I call count and give it a number like 3, it'll say 3, 2, 1, and then print done. So on the board, I'm going to talk about how this is working. So the key thing to understand about this function is that every time you call it, n, which is a parameter, is a local variable for the function. So first, we're going to call count. And we pass in a number, such as 3. And at that point, the variable n gets assigned 3. So the first time we call count, it has a local variable n, which has the value 3. Now, we hit the if statement, and we check, is n bigger than 0? And it is. So what we do is we print n. So we get a 3 printed on the screen. Then we do the next line, which is to call count. So we call count, and we give it as its parameter n minus 1. So this guy is the one doing the call. So it looks up n here. It says n is 3, minus 1 is a 2. It passes the 2 down to the next guy that is calling. So this guy gets a local variable n of 2. And that's how it actually does the countdown. So it's that n minus 1 that counts down one each time. So this guy starts at the if statement. It says, is n bigger than 0? And yes, it is. So it will print n. We get a 2 printed. And then it'll call count again. So it's going to call itself. But it's going to look up its n and say n minus 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. And it's going to give itself as a parameter the number 1. So this count has a local parameter which has a 1 in it. Now. This guy says, is 1 bigger than 0? And yes, it is. So it will print 1. And then it will go to the next line and say, I'm going to call count. It'll look up n, say that's 1, minus 1 is 0. So this version down here will get a parameter of 0. And its local variable n will point at 0. And here's where something different happens. This is where the, recur the recursion terminates. So when we go into the if statement for this guy, we do the test. We say, is n bigger than 0? And we ask the question, is 0 bigger than 0? And the answer is false. Um, it's equal, but it's not bigger. And so instead of doing the print n and the count n minus 1, instead we do the else clause of the if statement, and we just print done. So we get done printed on the board. Um, and at this point, we've ran out of lines in our function. And so we return from this guy up there. It's an implicit return. It's not actually written in our source code. And it's returning none of none type. And when that return happens, this activation frame on the stack goes away. And now we're back inside of this function. And where we come back inside of this function is right after the call to count n minus 1. But because we've done the if part of the if statement, we don't do the else part. So essentially, we were out of code here, too. So this guy has an implicit return back up here. It returns none of none type. And then its activation frame goes away. And then this guy 
it returns and it starts its execution back up right after the call to count at n minus 1. Now there's no code lines after that, so it's over and it returns none, it goes away, and now we're back to the original call. And this guy is also out of code, so it returns, and then we go back to the idle interpreter window. So that's a very simple example of recursion in Python.